Hi everyone, this is Chef Mark with Appliance Factory Fine Lines and welcome to my multi-part series on knife skills. I think knife skills are the most important part of being a great cook. If you have great knife skills, you can think on your feet, you can walk through the grocery store, just grab ingredients with the confidence that you know how to cut them and if you know how to cut them, when it comes time to cook them, you're going to have a lot more confidence in your kitchen. So we're going to start with a couple of basics. Obviously, you want to make sure that you wash your hands, that you have a sharp knife, and you want to have a great cutting board. I've got a couple different cutting boards here. Here's a plastic cutting board. I'm not a huge fan of plastic cutting boards. You can see this one's got a nice warp on it. Um, if you're using a plastic cutting board, make sure that it's nice and level. Plastic cutting board, I like some sort of uh, non-stick mat, maybe a wet paper towel. I like these board mats. Um, be careful with wet paper towels, they could stain your countertop. I've had it happen to me, so that's why I go to a board mat. But if you want the best choice, I love a wood cutting board and a cutting board that's as big as possible. This is a huge cutting board. Um, this is just part of my decor. It just lives on my kitchen counter at all times um, and it's ready to go at any time. I try to keep make cooking as convenient for myself as possible by keeping the things that I use most often out and ready. So my staple ingredients and certainly my cutting board. Um, a wood cutting board is going to be the easiest on your knife blade and my number one tip with cutting boards is avoid a glass cutting board. This is just going to kill your edge. It's just going to make sure that your knife is always dull. Um, and um, yeah, they're easy to clean up, but they just kill your knife. So avoid glass, please. Okay, now that we've got our cutting board chose, let's go ahead and talk about what is the best knife for you. Now that we chose the right cutting board, let's talk about what's the right knife to use. There's a lot of choices in knives and you don't have to spend a ton of money. I recommend going to your local restaurant supply store, looking around, asking for some advice and finding a knife that fits your hand and your budget. You don't have to spend a fortune to get a great knife. Now, I have a few different knives here. This is a sharpening steel. Stay tuned to a future episode because I'm gonna go over knife maintenance. A serrated knife, I typically use these only for bread. Avoid using these for cutting vegetables because they can kind of shred your vegetables. You end up having too much juice, too much liquid come out of your uh, vegetable. And also, um, they're typically not as sharp as a really well-maintained knife, standard knife. Okay, I've got a couple different kinds of knives here. These are an example of a stamped knife. So what this is, is a sheet of metal that gets stamped out in the, in the shape of a blade. It gets sharpened, rivets. Um, and a handle attached and these tend to be a little less expensive but a great choice. Um, a wood handle knife is a great choice if you have maybe some hand issues having trouble gripping the knife because the handle tends to be a little bigger you don't have to grip the knife as firmly. Um, my favorite choice is a forged knife and that is a knife that has kind of a snow plow, this bolster built into the handle. Some have this and some don't um, along with a full tang uh, where the blade uh, extends all the way through the end of the knife and then of course the handle is riveted on. Um, this is my choice of knife, but you don't have to spend a fortune. I certainly didn't. Okay, let's talk about a few things with safety. Holding a knife is very, very important. This might feel awkward at first for a lot of you, but we want to hold the knife with the pinch grip. So the way I like to demonstrate the pinch grip is I put the middle finger against the inside of the knife and and then I just pinch. And I'm not talking pinch with your fingernails. It's more like a pinch with your thumb over your knuckle. So there's my knuckle and there's my thumb. And there's my middle finger against the back of the knife. If you have your hand on top of your knife and you can't see the handle at all, chances are you're holding your knife correctly. It might feel awkward as opposed to this, which is the most common way I see people holding knives. And there's a few problems with this. When you're holding your knife like this, you have to push really hard with this finger to keep the tip from coming up on you. And what that does is put a lot of pressure all the way up your forearm, and you have this imbalance. The knife wants to pop out on you. It feels almost like the knife is going to slide out, and you're going to cut yourself. So just try this pinch grip. It's really going to help a few things out with your knife skills. It's also important to choose the right size knife. This is a 10 inch chef knife and this is my preference. What I like about a larger knife is that it's much safer than a small knife. If you're using a paring knife or a steak knife, 
you're in great danger of cutting yourself. The thing about a larger knife is because the blade is larger, there's more surface area to work with, and I think that your fingers end up being farther away from the pointy end that's liable to cut you. So don't be intimidated by a larger knife. It really is the best choice. Let's talk about posture when we're using a knife. One thing I like to do with my cutting board is make sure it's right even with the edge of my counter. If I see my board scooting away from me like it is there, I know that my posture is off. I want to hold myself up, pitch forward just slightly, and even stagger my feet just slightly. Um, I'm right-handed and I'm a right foot forward, just maybe a half inch. What that allows me to do is stand and look directly over my food. When I place my knife down, I want to be able to see both sides of my knife equally. If you're back here and you kind of can't see through your knife, we don't have x-ray vision, your posture is a little off. So think about that when you're working. The other thing we want to do is make sure that we're working in a forward rocking motion. So I see some people pulling back towards them. And this is a very comfortable knife motion, but you're losing advantage of your muscle and skeleton being able to push. Let's say you're cutting something butternut squash, big and heavy, being able to push down and through. And secondly, you really um, aren't able to take advantage of the speed of a knife. Once you get comfortable with a knife, being able to really get that smooth and fast and quick forward rocking motion. If you're going backwards, that's about as fast as I can go. Um, so get used to going forward. You really want that knife to slide through the cutting board. Don't worry about your knife dulling by sliding. It's designed to do this. If you're just chopping straight up and down like this, you're losing advantage of what a knife is designed to do. I can push, and I can push pretty hard, and I'm not going to cut myself because I'm not taking advantage of the edge gliding through the food. So let's practice this. Forward, pull back, and push forward. When I pull back, that's when I steer my knife from right to left, if you're right-handed. Pull back, steer the knife, push forward. Pull back, steer the knife, push forward. Pull back, steer the knife, push forward. I want you to take your time. Think slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. If you're only using the tip of your knife, and you're cutting like this, you're gonna be there all day. But if you take your time, and you just let your knife glide through the food, you can see I'm already working more quickly than if I was just using the tip of my knife. Knife skills are gonna require both hands to do something different at the same time. I'm right-handed, my right hand is gonna be holding the knife and rocking it, and my left hand, my guide hand, is gonna be supporting my knife and holding the food. I'm gonna talk about the guide hand in the next episode, but for today, we're gonna to keep it simple and we're gonna talk about that forward rocking motion. I have some scallions here. I love scallions to teach cooking because they give you a lot of feedback. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna use the back part of my knife as the cutting surface and the front part of my knife from here forward as the pivot point. I'm gonna to pivot to the point back. To get started, I like to kind of start on the back stroke and then cut forward. I find that it helps with that motion. So start back and I'm just gonna cut. You can see my guide hand. I've just got it back here in left field to make sure that's out of the way, okay? And when I'm cutting, I really want my knife to glide through. If I do it right, I can barely hear the crunch of the scallion. If I'm forcing the knife, I'm gonna hear, I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear them crunching. But if I let the knife glide through with my guide hand out of the way and just really letting the knife do the work, what I find here is that the knife just glides through. With good enough knife skills, I don't even need to hold what I'm cutting. The knife is sharp enough and is gliding through cleanly enough that I don't need to hold what I'm cutting. Now let me talk about food sticking to the side of your knife. I get this question all the time. This is fine. This is a normal part of using any knife. You're going to clean your knife by working away from you and down so that you don't run your finger straight across the blade. And if you have something fall off your knife and roll under your knife and you end up cutting it twice, what I call a double strike, just let it happen. With experience, it'll happen less and less and less. And the way you can evacuate your knife is maybe every eight or 10 cuts, it's a little bit of a flick and a little bit of a more forceful cut. Heavier things like carrots will just pop off the knife. But let it happen. It's okay, you're learning. Be easy on yourself. 
is something that is bound to happen. If I'm cutting a lot of things, I got a bunch of scallions. One of the things you can do with your guide hand is just kind of practice my pinky and my thumb kind of holding stuff together so that they stay in order. This is the start of using your guide hand properly. When I kind of get near the end and I don't want to get my guide hand involved, I then just back off. Just be really careful, okay? Just be really careful. I'm looking directly over my knife so I can see both sides of my work. It's very important that when you're cutting, you leave your food still and you move the knife. If you try to feed the food through the knife, you're gonna lose precision and you're much, much more likely to cut yourself. And it's harder to cut things in bundles. So really remember, keep your food still, and let your knife do the work. One tip on traffic control on your cutting board, is if you draw a diagonal line across your board with your knife, this side is gonna be everything that needs to be cut and this side is everything that has been cut. And if you maintain that separation, you're actually a lot less likely to cut yourself because you're not reaching over or under your knife to get scallions from this side to bring them over and cut them to have back on uh, the right side of my cutting board. So just really get in the habit of always working, if you're right-handed, from your left to your right. It's actually a, something that takes a little bit of practice. I see new culinarians struggle with this and also I find people are much more likely to cut themselves without that good board management. A basic but important knife skill is mincing. I like to mince for things that can be cut randomly. Herbs like rosemary and aromatics like garlic. I try not to mince onions because I like my onions to be cut more precisely. Let me show you how to mince. Rosemary, I just like to pull it against the grain off the stem and then forward and just kind of pop off the non-woody bit. There we go, time works the same way. And when I'm mincing, I'm just gonna hold my knife, caveman, as opposed to pinch grip, I'm gonna hold my knife with a fist near the back. And then I like to roll my fingers up and I'm gonna mince back and forth. What I like to do is create a pivot point here on the left side of my knife and try to work back and forth with that pivot point. As things tend to walk away from me, I use my knife as a scraper. I'm not worried about my knife dulling on the cutting board. This knife is extremely durable and I can kind of angle the knife as like a little bit of a snowplow, really protects the edge of the knife. And you can see very quickly, I'm able to bring my rosemary to a nice mince. Avoid this, everyone. Avoid working this way or this way. Just try to keep it nice and clean. And again, I'm not working extremely quickly. I'm just letting the knife do the work. There's my rosemary, it smells delicious. And garlic, There's of course a million ways to chop garlic. I've got a nice clove of garlic here. I like to look for medium pieces of garlic. You certainly can smash it with your knife. What I like to do is just kind of twist the skin off, just give it a little twist and the skin pops off. You have the added benefit, your fingers smell great. And here we go, this is the root end. We're ultimately not gonna use the root end, but when I'm mincing garlic, one thing I like to do is take advantage of that root end. So I'm just gonna chop maybe two or three times. Now I'm gonna get rid of the root end and I'm gonna mince this as well. A lot of people like to add a pinch of salt to the garlic. That salt, nice and coarse kosher salt, will help this mince a little bit more quickly. And how far you mince your garlic is completely up to you. I like to leave my garlic kind of rustic, big enough that I can see it popping around in my ingredients, but it's completely up to you. Thanks for tuning in. This is a multi-part series on knife skills, so I'm gonna invite you to come back. Keep tuning in, because I have a lot of information to share with you. This is Chef Mark. Make sure you like and subscribe.